morning. There's a lot going on. We have uh, service, obviously, right now. And then uh, that will include the bulk of the animals. And then uh, later on today, we have the memorial service for Will Paris. And so um, a lot of things going on. Pastor Doro preached the last couple of weeks. And uh, I enjoyed that as much as you did. And like I always tell Pastor Doro, what do I tell you, David? If I hang around you long enough, I'll become a good preacher. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's learned that line well. And so, yeah, it's probably working the, the other way, you know. <laughs> it is, it is, I think. More than you know. So, so... Any other announcements that we need before worship today? Okay. I'd love to, uh, to read these as we gather. God's creation is filled with amazing creatures, some of which dedicate their lives to making people's lives fuller and better. Since 1942, the guide dogs for the Blind Association was graduated more than 16,000 persons and dog teams for its training programs. The canine guard, guard guides get it, assist their human teammates each day in their living lives together. The guidance they give is expert and dependable. Good guidance in every stage of life is essential. Throughout scripture, our Lord promises his presence and his divine guidance to sustain and direct his people. Paul summed up that blessed relationship by simply saying, So then, whether we live or die, we are the Lord's. Seeking the Lord's guidance and responding to his promptings brings blessings to our lives. And we begin in his name, and we rise to sing the first hymn. Mm -hmm. Are your deeds. 
All the earth worships you and sings praises to you. They sing praises to your name. Come and see what God has done. It is awesome in his deeds for the children of men. Bless our God, O peoples. Let the sound of his praise be heard. Let us now confess our sin to God, our merciful Father. O most gracious God, we admit and confess our sinfulness. We know well that we are by nature sinful and unclean. Daily we have done things we ought not to have done, and have not done things we should have been doing as your faithful servants. We have been unforgiving and loveless and careless in the stewardship of your creation. We deserve your punishment in this life and for eternity. Trusting in your mercy, we come to you for forgiveness. Our trust is not in ourselves, but in the merits of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us, O God. Grant us remission of all our sins, and guide us to the new lives that reflect your goodness and love. God is indeed gracious and merciful, and hears our supplications. By the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, and as his called and ordained servant, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. I have fled to you for refuge. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ear to my pleas for mercy. In your faithfulness, answer me. In Enter it not into judgment with your servant. For no one living is righteous before you. Glory be to the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord. I have blessed you for refuge. Morning. Good morning. Our Old Testament reading today is from Genesis chapter 50, verses 15 through 20. 
21. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father was dead, they said, It may be that Joseph will hate us and pay us back for all the evil that we did to him. So they sent a message to Joseph, saying, Your father gave this command before he died. Say to Joseph, Please forgive the transgression of your brothers and their sin, because they did evil to you. And now, please forgive the transgression of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. His brothers also came and fell down before him and said, Behold, we are your servants. But Joseph said to them, Do not fear, for am I in the place of God? As for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. So do not fear. I will provide for you and for your little ones. Thus he comforted them and spoke to them and spoke kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our epistle is from Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 12. As for the one who is weak in faith, welcome him, but not to quarrel over opinion. One person believes that he may eat anything while the weak person eats only vegetables. Let not the one who eats despise the one who abstains. And let not the one who abstains pass judgment on the one who eats, for God has welcomed him. Who are you to pass judgment on the servant of another? It is before his own master that he stands or falls, and he will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One person esteems one day as better than another, <coughs> while another esteems all days alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. The one who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God, while the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. For one of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother? Or you, why do you despise your brother? For we all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then each of us will give account of himself to God. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel comes to us this day in the book of St. Matthew. The 18th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Peter came up and said to Jesus, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but seventy times seven. <laughs> Therefore, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his servants. When he began to settle, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. And since he could not pay, his master ordered him to be sold with his wife and children and all that he had and payment to be made. So the servant fell on his knees, imploring him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the master of that servant released him and forgave him the debt. But when that same servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. And he, seizing him, he began to choke him, saying, Pay what you owe. So 
So this fellow servant fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. He refused and went and put him in prison until he should pay the debt. When his fellow servants saw what had taken place, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their master all that had taken place. Then his master summoned him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should you not have had mercy on your fellow servant, as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his master delivered him to the jailers until he should pay all his debt. So also my heavenly Father will do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother from your heart. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated. Next for our message today is the Epistle lesson, read just a few moments ago. Dear Christian friends, looking over the Epistle lesson, some words jump out. They are familiar words to all of us, no doubt. Verse 11, every knee shall bow. Well, we find this verse also in Isaiah chapter 45. And again in Philippians chapter 2, for it says, Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every knee confess, and every tongue confess, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Not just some knees, but all knees. We have the word genuflect. And in the Greek, gen means knee. And flect means to bend. So right now, reach down and touch your knee. That knee will one day bow in complete and total submission to Christ. Saved knees, unsaved knees, Adult knees, teen knees, children's knees, rich knees, poor knees, old knees, young knees, religious knees, atheistic knees, Ben Laden's knees, Hitler's knees, the leader of North Korea's knees, they shall all bow. And as sure as the sun will rise tomorrow, your knees will one day bow before the Creator. 
God divides all people into two groups, saved and unsaved, Christian and non-Christian. The Christian is the one whose name is written in the book of life due to receiving Christ as his Savior and Lord in his or her lifetime. When we die, our soul goes to heaven. Our bodies, whether buried or cremated, will wait until the Lord returns and we appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And there you will bow your knee before Christ and give an account of your Christian life. You will report on what you did with your life after salvation. Were you baptized? Did you help build up the church? Did the Word of God have a significant place in your life? Did you practice a serious prayer life? Did you share the gospel with the lost? You will bow your knee and answer to God. For the non-Christian, their soul will go to hell. And when the Lord returns, their soul will not go to heaven. No more chances. The non-Christian will be separated from God. When the non-Christian stands before the throne of God, there will be no compassion. He will see no compassion in God. Not a God of self, not a God of salvation, but a God of wrath and judgment. In that group will stand everyone who ever lived but rejected his only begotten Son. Everyone who tried to get into heaven by good works will be in that line. Everyone who didn't have time for religion will be in that line. One by one. It'll take place in the twinkling of an eye that they will bow their knees before God. Only two issues will be discussed. What did you do with my son? And is your name written in the book of life? It's tough, isn't it? It's tough to praise God if you're so busy passing judgment on your neighbors. At least that is what the Apostle Paul seems to be saying in the passage from Romans in which we, which he urges the community that in the house churches at that time in Rome to avoid fighting over non-essential matters. So I have one for you. I have experienced some voters meetings where a non-essential matter took center stage and almost broke out into a fisticuffs. Members calling out each other who disagreed with their ideas and what they wanted to do. Members calling out each other to go outside and to put up their dukes makes me so mad. Now I know. I, uh, I ain't no saint. At least I'm far from being perfect. But the New Yorker in me at that time wanted to say to these two guys but I didn't say it. I wanted to say, okay, you two step outside and fight. And when you two turkeys are done beating the daylights out of each other, then I'll take on the winner. But I didn't say that. But it left a bad taste in everybody's mouth. Oh, uh, 
What was the stink all about? Termites. And what to do about them. Yeah, termites and what to do about them. Talk about non-essential matters. Now, it was a matter to be solved, for sure. But surely it could have been decided upon without threats. Threats of violence. Finally, the excuses will run out and the everyone will fall on their knees. Every knee will bow. Certainly, they will want mercy and they will plead for it. But at the last moment, well, it will be too late. Then the words from the throne of God will be heard. Depart from me. For I never knew you. Then God turns to the angels and commands, Bind him hand and foot and take them away and cast them out into outer darkness. And there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This portion of scripture outlines the Christian life concerning how we should deal with each other. Today we receive forgiveness in the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. So forgiven. Let's share Christ. Let us share the love of Christ with all those that we know and meet. And it's in the name of Jesus. Amen. amen. To close, please turn to your neighbor and say, Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. We sing to him.
Apostolic Church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray for the church, that God's people will confidently and joyfully share the message of salvation in word and deed. Grant that humility and mutual service be the hallmarks of our lives together. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the nations of the world, that the presence of Christ be experienced everywhere around the globe and that the gospel may have free course in every land. We bless you for your dedicated service of missionaries and deployed church workers in so many places around the globe. Grant that their service may meet with success and be filled with joy. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for our families and for those who share in our Christian fellowship and join with us in worship. Grant that we be always ready to listen to others and to grant our forgiveness when it is needed. As we live in community together, grant that we never take others for granted, but rather that we encourage the laborers in which we work together to the glory of God. We pray for those with special concerns and needs. This day, those who are hospitalized or shut in, those who are grieving at this time, the unemployed and the underemployed, the chronically ill, and all those whose needs are known and not known, are known, not known to us. Especially, Lord, on this day, we pray for the Paris family. Lord, they have been such a big part in really all of our lives, sharing your love. We ask that you be with them during this time, this difficult time for them. We ask too, Lord, that you strengthen them during this time as, as when the, these kinds of things happen, it brings up many questions. And some even may doubt. We ask that you strengthen them, Lord. Be with them always and help us to be good ministers to them. Grant that we bring your blessing to situations of need and in all places. Even when that service requires devotion and sacrifice on our part. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful God, we thank you for all those faithful people whose words and actions have guided us in the past especially remembering those no longer with us on earth who now share in your eternal presence. We thank you for the times when forgiveness offered by others has blessed and sustained us. By the working of your Holy Spirit, direct us to walk your servant's way throughout our lives until that day when we stand in your glorious presence in heaven. Amen. Amen. We are coming upon St. Francis Day, when we remember the beauty of creation, especially the gifts of, God, of animals and our pets. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you for the gift of life. We call it Francis, who celebrated your love for all creation. Today we embrace our connectedness to all, to wind, sea, and sky, to earthworm, giraffe, and chicken, to fish and puppy, the cats of the jungle, and in our homes. Deepen our care for all that lives. In the name of Jesus, our teacher, Savior, and friend. Amen. Holy God, we thank you for the gifts of pets in our lives. Through these animals, you have brought many blessings. Today, we pause to name our gratitude and to pray the blessings on each of these pets. For the companionship of pets, we say thank you. Bless these animals' lives in each of our care. May each 
shown of love throughout all of life's days. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, you place all living things into the care of humankind. We pray that companionship with these household pets will deepen our care for the animals everywhere. Help us to balance our needs with theirs and lead us in ways of life together that will be sustainable for all. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May be seen. Spirit, 
and grant that we receive the body and blood of our Lord as a guarantee of our salvation and a foretaste of the feast to come in your eternal kingdom. To you alone, O oh Father, be all glory, honor, and praise, together with the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ. Bless us, your children, so that we will partake, we who partake of Christ's body and blood and of his precious blood may be filled with your heavenly peace and joy, so that we may live in the hope of an etern eternity gathered around your heavenly table. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come, o Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray.
firm in the faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace.
set apart for you to do.
I David. have, I have, oh, go ahead, David. Uh, church council meeting will be this Tuesday at 7 p.m. here at the church. Um, we've been praying for the last couple of weeks for my friend. Uh, last Sunday I had a prayer request for my friend Buggy, and she went to the doctor on Monday, and her, doc her doctor said that her test came back awesome. She's still cancer-free. So she wants to thank you. She told me to thank you guys all for your prayers. Yes. Peace.